Hi, this is M, and I'm going to do another pressed flower session today, so I thought I'd go ahead and turn on the camera because I, I don't think I've showed you some of the flowers that I'm going to do today. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, then please stay tuned and let's get started. The first thing I'm doing is Montbrecia, and I love Montbrecia, so you can see i got a pretty good little pile here. And, and I wanted to show you kind of how they grow on the bush. Let me get a piece of cardboard here. So as you can see, they're a, they're a quorum. And if you see my In the Garden video, I, the one I'm going to be working on coming up at some point, you'll see what they look like when they're growing out in the garden. Uh, but they have these long stems that come up uh, from the ground. Their leaves are kind of long and narrow, sort of like a, a tulip or a daffodil. And... Uh, They've got this beautiful orange color. Hold it for a super long time. I just really like these. Very reliable color. When I have this many to work with, uh, what I'll tend to do is cut the parts that haven't opened up yet into their own section. And then these pieces lower down that are not quite as tight I'll fan them a little bit and kind of give them a little nudge so that they open up a little bit. I'll do that one, for example. See how it's still pointed, but once I play with it, kind of tease it open a little bit. And so I'll do that to a couple of these just to see how that works. And then I'll usually put the ones that aren't open as much on one sheet. And then I'll clip these off separate because these stems are actually pretty hard. And so it's going to be, if I try to press the stem, the, these stems that are lower down that are, that are this thick, uh, it's going to make it more difficult for these to press nice and flat. This particular um, one is a little too far gone, so I won't press that one. And so that's what I'm going to end up doing when I'm prepping the pages. And then after I've got these two pages filled up, I will come back and, and show you what they look like and me putting them in the book. This sheet's now ready to go in the book, so I'll put my top paper along the spine. And then I'm going to set this one in. And then I'll just make sure that everything's laying the way I want it to when I put it down. Make sure everything stays on the page, and that's ready to go. I set it on my chipboard, which is going to go on top of my cardboard. This is my bottom layer for the, the stack that I'm going to build for today's pressing cycle. And if you watch my other pressing videos, you'll see more about it. Uh, these press flower demonstrations of pressing go hand in hand with the In Your Garden series, and then the Peeking at Flower series, and then I have other project video series. Now, the ones that are open like this, I'm going to do a little bit more on the fly because I have a way I want to arrange them. I'm going to have them facing the way you see them, which is going this way because I'm going to roll my book over. And generally speaking, I like these to flatten out this way, you know, like kind of looking like that. So I'm going to start rolling the book a little bit and then taking these, hopefully you can see, and putting them underneath the little lip here, which will help to get them to, to lay over that way. And so this is why I will actually arrange these as I'm rolling the pages. So now I'm ready for another row. You can, some of these, if they're opened up a lot, like this one, you can, you can do it the opposite way. You can do it open face. So if you want to do it more of an open face configuration, then you would put it in the book this way and then roll it open face. So I'll do a couple open face because these are extremely wide open. I don't tend to think they're quite as attractive that way, personally, but try it because everybody, 
Uh, everybody's opinion is different. I do do some open faced because I will, uh, you know, there's times when I want to use them that way. I just do a higher percentage of them more in this profile format for whatever reason. So now I'll do another row in the profile format. And you can see how I kind of bevel this way. Uh, the book, how that's going. This one looks like it wants to be open face. Now I'll do one more row. And since I'm starting to get close to the edge of the book, which is right here, I'll use uh, some smaller ones to make sure that I don't go off the book. At least on this part. Now I'll roll roll and so you get the idea and so when I say I use the book to roll sometimes you'll uh, might see some other videos where I talk about using the book to roll them see how it rolls it down that's what I'm talking about I, I'm thinking kind of strategically if you can call it that um, how I want them to turn out and then using the book to roll them that way if it can uh, be helpful Okay, so here's how many layers I got out of the Mont Breaches that I brought in. So I'll go ahead and put them under some weight while I do some other flowers. And just to recap, if you haven't watched some of my other videos, what I have here is I have the book, and then I have a piece of chipboard, cardboard, chipboard, then another book, piece of chipboard, cardboard, chipboard. And again, the only reason why I'm using the chipboard is because it's smooth and the cardboard has ridges and if I don't use chipboard in between then the um, then the uh, I'm just using that for the camera to focus then the uh, then the flowers will get the cardboard ridges pattern which uh, I don't personally want and the reason for the cardboard between is because that gives air circulation between the layers so just in case you haven't watched my other video, I'll just recap that. This next round that I'm doing is um, hydrangea. And let me bring this closer up to the camera. This is only about 25% or less of the bloom that I brought it off of. It's a huge, huge bloom. But they start to, they start to wilt really quickly so I'm only gonna I only bring it in a little bit at the time and then the other thing that I brought in for this round is bird's foot uh, truffle and this is how it grows out in the garden and I tend to primarily just do the uh, the yellow parts of it but I just wanted to show you. It's it's a weed. It grows along the sides of the road. And I have some in my ditch out front. And they're blooming now. And so that's the next thing we're going to do. For the hydrangea, I typically just make them down into smaller sizes. Like this. Because I don't, I don't press the whole pom pom. It's just I don't personally. I don't like the effect too much, so I tend to break them down. Mostly, I just press the individual florets by going in the back and snipping like this. And I will, and sometimes I will press them in in uh, profile, in which case I'll leave the stem on. So I'll do it in profile. Or open face is typically the way I do it. And then if I do clusters, I do these smaller clusters. For example, um, I would take a cluster like this with say three to five flowers and then press it as a cluster. So that, uh, I don't know, I just think they look better when it's not a huge mass. But if you're doing uh, mixed media or something special where you want the mass and you want more texture, then press them in larger amounts. Um, you know, as we've talked about before, there's no rules. 
and you'll you'll develop your own style as you go along. For the bird's foot, what I typically do is I will take the stem off the back, fan them out, and then turn them upside down and do it and do it that way. And mostly I when I'm working with them, I I will mostly take the individual florets and let me bring my cardboard back up and just show you see kind of what it'll look like when it's pressed and then the individual florets but I usually find that they press better if I put them down when I'm pressing them and then I'll use these in uh, in, in little arrangements so I'm going to go ahead and get some pages put together and I'll show you what they look like before I put them in the book. Okay, the page on the left is ready to have the book closed on it and it's a combination of some profiles, a little cluster here, and then the open face which I tend to, to uh, press them face down. And you've probably heard me said it before many times, I don't know why, but generally I press things face down, they just seem to lay better that way. And then I'm just going to just kind of make sure they lay the way that I want to as I'm closing and rolling the book over them. And that, that uh, that they're not um, on top of each other if I don't want them on top of each other. Okay. Okay, this is pages ready to put in. That piece that I showed you a little earlier of the whole little section, I'm going to press. Unfortunately, though, it's kind of already wilted, so I'll see how it turns out. I'll go ahead and give it a try anyway, just because. Go ahead and close the book on it. Let's see if there's... Um, Anything that I can help to flatten out as I lay it down. Make sure it's all on there. This next round that I'm going to press is uh, some open face flowers with thicker centers. And when I'm doing those, I usually will grab a thicker book. And I don't know if it's the right or wrong logic. Uh, but my, my philosophy is that by using a thicker book, there's more pages um, with which the thicker centers can indent into and thereby hopefully laying down flatter petals. And it's worked pretty good. So let me sh give you a closer look at what these are. This and this... These are osteospermums. There's two different kinds. Isn't that gorgeous? And those will press because the centers, see, you can press them and they'll, they'll flatten out. And so those will press. And so all I do with those is just and you want to get them when they're they're not wilty at all because then they'll lay down better. I just give them a little bit of a push, set them down on the page. Face down is how I do it. And then I haven't clipped the back off of this. Usually I do the clip the backs in the yard when I'm outside, but I didn't do that on this one. I'll just give it a tiny little push and set it down. These are Coreopsis. I've got two different kinds. Well, I have more than these two kinds, but these are the two kinds that I've brought in. This is kind of a cupped, like a spoon cupped shape. And then this is just regular. I am in love with this guy. You can see me talk about it now in a couple of my In the Garden videos. Same thing. I cut the, back, uh, the stem off the back, and then I'm just going to give it a little push and put it down. Same with this one. 
This one's already kind of wilty, so I only brought a couple of them in. And I try to do more or less like kind things on the page. In other words, these all have thicker centers, and so I won't put as many on the page. Um, I'll give them a little breathing room and then uh, do it that way. The Cosmos, which is what these are, press really well too, but I notice a lot of times the Cosmos, I don't know if you can see it, uh, turn it that way, but there's some there's some yellow specks, and what it is is it's the pollen from the center. And if there's a lot of it, what I will do is I have a paintbrush on my shelf. It's it's kind of a soft paintbrush, and so what I'll actually do is take the paintbrush, put my fingers behind it to support it a little bit, and I'll knock some of that pollen off. Although I seem to be making it worse, but anyway, usually it works real good, and I'll blow on it. That actually worked better and just blow some of that pollen off so that it doesn't uh, imprint and embed on, on the petals. The, the petals of the uh, Cosmos are pretty fragile. And again, I cut the back off. You can also press these in profile if you want to. And I, and I do do that and I will do that, so keep that in mind. Uh, but for this sheet here, these are all going to be open face. So I'm going to cut the back off again you can see that it's it's kind of soft, and so I'm going to put it face down. And that's all I brought in this time, so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and finish this page and press it. But I just wanted to show you how I, I do these thicker centers, and in order to determine if I think that they're going to press, if I've never pressed it before, I see if there's any give, like I showed you. And if there is, I'll give it a try. Some are so hard that it won't give it all, and and what will happen if, if there's no give at all is the, it, the pressing won't get around the petals and then your, your petals will be all um, wrinkled and wilty and mangled because they, they won't get a chance to have pressure on them. But these, these do pretty good. I want to show you closing the book because there's one other technique that I use that I wanted to bring to your attention. As I mentioned, I will generally lay them flat, especially if they're nice and crisp, meaning that they, they haven't started wilting yet. Because if they haven't started wilting yet, they will lay down when you put the book down, and these are nice and, and uh, well, nice and, and flat and laying down. But when things start to wilt, like if these started to get wilty, or they don't look like they're going to lay down real good like this because they're getting wilty like this guy, what you can do is you can take... And again, I use the book to roll, and I will set this in here. Well, let me start over here. Hopefully you can see. I'll set this in here like that. I'll let the book do the rolling. You see how that's going to lay it? It's going to fan it out as it closes. So you can lay them flat, or you can fan it. And both ways work. Get the pollen off of there. So you set it in there. This one I'll leave face down because I think it's going to be fine. This one will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and roll the book down. Come here. And then, because these are kind of wilty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll the book on those. I'm going to get a smaller one. Now, this is not very opened yet. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and roll it out so that it rolls open. And then this one, I'll probably go ahead and leave in profile if I have enough room. Let's see if I can, and I'll smash it with my finger just so that I know I can get it flat. Looks like I've got space there. I'm not touching anything. Roll it down. Roll it down. It's not coming over the side of the book yet, but I want to tuck it under there a little bit more. Okay, so that's kind of a couple different techniques for those open faced flowers, open faced flowers that are a little bit thicker. For this round, I'm going to do some more um, smaller flowers, thinner, sheer, things like that. And what I brought in is some petals off of a dahlia, 
and the reason I didn't bring the whole dahlia in is because it's it's still opening up and I'm only going to be pressing so many of the petals at a time because they'll start wilting really fast so I just kind of on the plant took my hand and, and got underneath the cluster and just kind of wiggled and pulled them out because my goal was to get these ends and for these I'll just use them for uh, for petal art or to put behind other things for accents but I think that the uh, the coloring on them is just beautiful so I like to do that with exciting colored um, uh, petals that uh, that the whole head, in this case the dahlia head, would be difficult to press because it's so thick. So then I just opt to uh, do some of the petals. And I also brought in some bachelor button and then verbena. Here's some verbena. This is kind of a it's kind of a cool maroonish type purple color. I don't know how the, if the camera is picking it up very well. The, the lighting in here is not the best. And then here is a red. Verbena and Bachelor Button. Everything in this, in this container holds their color for a long time. Typically, I've just been pressing so long that over the years, I, I just tend to know some things that hold their color longer. And so I tend to lean towards that. Um, something that doesn't hold its color well or doesn't come out of the press well I tend to shy away from unless I have some other compelling reason. The other thing I have in here which to me is super important is this butterfly weed and it, it comes in different colors like yellowish and whitish and and so on. I really like the orange and I have a couple of them that are just blooming now and I press the individual florets. I actually brought in a little, this is going to be really tedious uh, to do the individual florets, but I, I have been waiting years to get these. I had them probably 10, 15, no more than that, probably about 15, 20 years ago in my garden, and I just love them. They hold their color really well. And I've spent the last, in some of my other videos I probably shared with you, my saga to get butterfly flower, um, but I'd spent about going on three, four years now that I have been trying to get some more of these flowers and get a plant to actually bloom. And finally this year, um, I've got some bloom. So tedious it may be, but I need to take advantage of it while I have them because who knows if they'll, they'll overwinter. So let me show you a couple of techniques I use for pressing these. So for the butterfly weed, I just take uh, a, a, a section like that and this, the stem stops here and then each flower has its own individual little um, stem but the main the main stem and so I just cut above that and see they all uh, will come apart on their own now this these stuck together because of that so I'm going to cut them a little bit higher and then I'm going to actually sit there and take each one and I'm going to arrange them just like that, a bunch of rows, and, uh, and that's the way I face them in the book. Verbena, I just look at my cluster. Most, this, most of these are pretty good. I'll turn it over, and I will just clip right at the back, just like that. And, and then I typically... Typically press, it depends, something like this that's cupping a lot, I will press, I'll turn it this way on the paper. And then sometimes I'll press them upside down. It just depends on whether they're cupping this way or whether they're cupping the other way. I'll just press it whichever way it seems like it's going to want to lay, um, be forced to lay the flattest. And then the petals, of course, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. I just set them on the page. And what else did we have? Oh, the bachelor button. The bachelor button, this sheath is, is really thick, so I don't try to press them in the sheath. I just, and I may have showed this in the other video that I'm working on, so if, forgive me if I did. So I'm just going to get those, and that's all I do with these. 
that's how they are, and I just let them free fall. I use them in for backgrounds, accents, mini arrangements, that kind of thing. They hold typically they hold their color well. It depends on whether they uh, are having a happy year or not. <laughs> These hold the, the blue holds their color a lot better than the than the pink. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these flowers and get them processed. And I just wanted to see, wanted to show you a couple of techniques I use when I'm using these smaller uh, blossoms. This page is kind of a mixture of things, and it's ready to uh, go in the book. So I just thought I'd show you that. Okay, that's just, that was pretty simple. Here's a page of primarily verbena that is going into the book, but I, the reason I'm showing you this is there's a little bit of a technique I want to share. And when I do what I'm going to show you, which is ma manipulate some of these flowers, I'm putting them on the outer edge so that the book's already pretty much rolled and I have more control. And maybe this will demonstrate it. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. Make sure that's not touching. This is just uh, some of that butterfly flower. There's not really much I need to do here. They're all going to lay pretty flat as soon as I put this down. But what I'm trying to do here is I want these in profile. So I'm going to roll to kind of lay them over. And then this here, not this one that I'm messing with. Uh, it's kind of opening up. Let me set him off to the side for the next page. But these guys, where I want to keep the green part on, I, I'm going to try to, when they close, I'm going to try to have this. There's five petals, and I'm going to try to have one, two, three, and then there's two here. I'm going to try to have it close right in the center of the two petals. And so... I'm going to manipulate it. It doesn't always work out, but I do, and it doesn't take long to try. So I'm going to grab this underneath the lip of the paper, and then as I'm rolling over on it, you see I can move this around. And so I'm going to, and that's not going to really work perfectly, so that one I'm just going to have to, well, unless I roll it, I can roll it. There, okay, see, here's the here's the two, right here, here and here. So that would be how I was trying to roll it. This one, I'm rolling over to get it in, in profile. And then this one was going to be in profile. Although it's, these are kind of have a lot of sap in them, so they're kind of sticky. And now we're to these two, which I'm going to try to manipulate. And here's the edge of my book. So roll down. See? Okay, I'm in between the two. And then here, if I get between the two, it's going to be right in here. So just roll over, and there it's right, right between the two. Just position it. And same here, if I roll this in the, over the middle. And then roll that over. All right. Theoretically speaking. <laughs> I know, I, I take way too long sometimes to do this, but that's <laughs> sort of how obsessive I am. All right, on to the next round. For this brown, let me show you what I brought in in a close-up. This is Scoviola, fan flower. Holds its color well. It's a small, um, dainty. You just press open. It's very simple to press. And then I brought in some straw flowers. It has nothing to do with pressing, but I bring them in and then I let them, um, I let them open up. I think I might have showed this in a in a different video. So whenever I'm out getting flowers for pressing, uh, if there's some ready and I get them before they open very much, because I like them when they're still in tight bud formation, like that. 
if you want a more open, like this, then you wait a little longer to pick them. And then you can see the center better. So it just depends what you like. This is kind of a creamy color, pink. All right, so we have Scalviola. And then this one. This is another one that I had grown probably 15 or more years ago, Mexican Sage. And it, it, it didn't live very long, and I really, really liked it. Holds its its um, this kind of purplish color for a really long time. It's very silky. It's got these little hairy fibers. And I only have two of them right now, but they're just starting to bloom. But I was so excited about it. And I'll press the whole, you know, the whole arrangement like this, or I'll drill down and press these little individual florets. So it just depends what you want to do and how I deconstruct it. It just depends on what mood I'm in at the time. Uh, the other thing that I brought in here is this. What I really like is look at how beautiful that color is. This also holds its color for a really long time. Uh, and it's, it's not dry, it's not a, a straw flower type situation, but it is uh, slightly papery. And I will, and I'll show you the page when I have some of it on here, but I will typically snip the smaller pieces off. I probably won't leave it in this whole cluster. It smells really good because what it is, and I brought the tag in, is it's Kent Beauty Ornamental Oregano. So it has a really um, aromatic smell. And hopefully it will come back. So we'll see. I think I got it this year. Okay, I'm going to show That's you. That's what that is. Uh, let me close in the book. I've got the fan flower and then that Mexican sage and then these, this oregano. And I'm going to use the book to roll it the way that I want it to be positioned. And so that's why I wanted to show you uh, on camera me doing it. I'll probably do that more in a profile. This leads to be kind of conducive into a profile. Let's see if there's some that look kind of open faced. Maybe we could force that to be open a little bit. You never know what you're going to get, but you can always just try different ways of putting it in there. Probably do that in sort of a profile. And let me cut one more off over here. And then we'll roll the book over it. And kind of hold it in so it doesn't go off the page. I brought in a couple more things for this session. I'm getting burned out. I <laughs> I get to the point, it's, it's been several hours, even though you'll probably see this over the course of, I don't know what, 30 minutes, more or less, plus or minus. Um, but I reached the point, it's like, oh, I just I can't do anymore. But I wanted to show you a couple of last things before we end this pressing session. And so let me bring them up closer to the camera. And these verbena, don't worry, they're not going to go to waste. I'm still going to be pressing some of them. And, and uh, this is just my pile, my holding pile. I'll use them as filler on these other things. This is, um, and I may have shown you some of these before, but in any event, this is Bidden. And I showed you these in the garden, in my In the Garden uh, vlog, where you see them on the bush. And... This is, uh, when, you, when I bring them in, this is what their, their foliage looks like. Here's a little bud right there. And then another yellow flower is this bush potentilla. And here's, here's its leaves. They have these little tiny, tiny leaves there. And so that's the, the bush potentilla. And then, uh, in my in the garden vlog, I when I was in the garden, I was asking if anybody knows what this is. Tell me, I'm dying to know. I've, it's been there forever. 
in my garden. I don't even know how long, but it's this. It grows on these tall spikes that are about probably three or four foot tall. The bees absolutely love it. They get, I swear they get drunk on this, these, <laughs> whatever this nectar is, I think they get drunk on it. But the butterflies and the bees and the hummingbirds just love it. But here's the leaf. And the leaf grows like a basil clump, slow to the ground, and then these spikes are up really high. And so I asked in the garden vlog, but I'll ask here again, does anybody know what this is? That's, that's what the leaf looks like. These eco, eco print really well. These leaves do. Well, these do too, for that matter. These hold their color for a super long time. And I typically press the florets because the florets mean more to me in arrangements than, than pressing the whole clump. But again, when you're doing your thing, you can decide what works best for you. So I would love to know what those are. And then look, I found a couple of more of the Mexican sage on a different bush. Just getting started. And then the other last thing I wanted to show you, because I can't remember if I've ever showed this before in pressing, is the the toad flax. And I've got these two colors, kind of a purplish blue and then a light and then a light pink. And they grow on spiky uh, st stalks. And again, those kind of like this other one that I just showed, they get about three or four feet tall. Reseed profusely, so they are they can be kind of evasive, so you gotta pull them out if they're somewhere where you don't want them, but I do let them grow here and there because uh, because of their pressed flower value. And so what I do for these, real quick, is with the with the uh, toad flax, I just pull off the spent. Uh, those would be considered the seed blossoms, and then I just set them on here. So they're for me they're you know they're fairly simple to process. And I just leave them in a cluster on the stem. And then for these, these, I just, just like most of the other open face flowers, I just lay them face, usually face down. And then this I'll probably just do like that. And then these, sometimes I'll leave them on the spike instead of taking them all off, but I'll push them open so that then I can pinch each one off individually as I need it later on. Or sometimes I will pinch them off individually. Well, I broke that one. <laughs> just, just be careful you don't go breaking them all, I guess. And uh, press them individually. And so um, that's what I'll do with those. I just wanted to show you the last two pages that I'm going to be putting into the book for the day and then that's going to complete my set, my pressing session. I thought I'd close this video out by showing you the bench that I use for setting the stacks of flowers on when they're going through the pressing cycle. It's nothing high tech going on here. Um, back behind this is where I lay the books out when I rotate them around so that they can dry between stacks. And I'm sorry for the lighting. It's going to be bad lighting because the sun's shining in that window. And then over here, I've got four piles going on. The one furthest uh, to the left down at the end there, that those are almost done. I'll be taking them out from under the, underneath the weight and uh, out of the books and then letting them dry between the cardboard and the um, chipboard for a few days and then putting them into their holding book which you've seen where I tag them so I know what's in there. This next pile, um, the third third pile away, that's uh, kind of medium flowers or kind of halfway between the drying cycle. Then that little short pile are the ones that I did yesterday and then this pile here that we're looking at is what um, what we did today. So that's just, uh, I just put the two bricks on. I only have five of these cement br bricks. And so what I, because this is the newest pile, I like to put two bricks on top for the first couple of days. And so I ended up having to rob a brick off of that one, which I wish had two bricks, but it doesn't. I guess I should buy some more bricks someday, but... 
uh, it, it is what it is for now. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you don't press flowers, hopefully when you go out into the garden or the forest or something like that, you'll just look at them in a different way maybe than that you did before. And, and if nothing else, uh, hopefully you just kind of enjoyed watching or seeing what the different flowers look like. And I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for your wonderful comments and subscribing. Someday, hopefully, I will be able to do some videos that are project videos about things that I actually make with these flowers. <laughs> Maybe after the summer season's over and I have more time. So if that's something that you might be interested in, I hope to have some more of those kinds of videos in the future. Have a great day and thank you for watching.